tonight on KVAQ-TV. What you can do to avoid being scammed via phone call. Plus, Texas makes a big change to who can receive the COVID-19 vaccine. And an update on UTRGV's commencement ceremonies for this spring. KVAQ-TV starts now. Hey there, vaqueros, and welcome back to this week's edition of KVAQ TV. I'm Verilo Infante. Today is Monday, March 29th, and at the top of the hour. Phone calls from random numbers and automated voices, also known as robocalls, are making their way to many phone lines across the nation. We spoke to the Federal Trade Commission to find out how to stop these calls. Adam Cardona reports. From you today, we will assume you do not want to cover your vehicle and the warranty will be voided. Press 2 to decline. Calls just like this one have been plaguing phone lines with threats of warranty cancellations and other alarming messages, disrupting productivity at businesses and at home. For work, I'm getting them like every 10, 20 minutes, it feels like. On my personal phone, I'm getting like at least two. Today, I've already received two, so... UTRGV mass communication major Samantha McKeither mentions how these calls have caused interruptions while working at her family's business. I don't even look at the phone sometimes because I think that it's just one of those calls. So sometimes I do miss a call from a client or potential client, and that's not good at all. We spoke to the Do Not Call program manager and staff attorney for the Federal Trade Commission, James Evans, who advises that if you do not authorize consent to receive these calls, it is illegal. There's both commercial telemarketing robocalls and outright fraudulent robocalls. In both cases, they're illegal. Evan states that under the FTC's telemarketing sales rule, they can sue the companies for civil penalties of more than $40,000 per call. He warns to look out for robocalls regarding Social Security, IRS, state, or federal tax collection services and tech support. We encourage people not to press any number when they hear a robocall. Sometimes pressing the number to be put on a do not call list could result in you getting more calls because then the caller knows that you're a real person. Evans recommends folks to visit ftc.gov slash calls for resources on call blocking on home and mobile phones. You can report calls at reportfraud.ftc.gov on their English and Spanish site. You can also add your number to the National Do Not Call Registry by visiting do not call .gov. Reporting for KVAQ-TV, Adam Cardona. La Sal de Rey is one of many historic landmarks in the Rio Grande Valley. A once-hidden gem is now a tourist attraction. Reporter Hector Tamez tells us more about its history. This salt is no ordinary salt. It's historical, dating back to thousands of years. These lakes here in northern Hidalgo County started to appear on Spanish maps in the late 1720s. This salty tourist attraction sits north of Edinburgh on Highway 186. UTRGV Community Historical Archaeology Project with Schools Program Director Roseanne Bachagarza says that the lake is a valuable natural resource to the Rio Grande Valley. So the, the salt has been mined there by Native American peoples for many thousands of years um, prior to the Spaniards' arrival. She reveals that there are smaller salt lakes near La Sal del Rey. Bacha Garza adds that in the late 1790s, the land that encompasses these salt lakes was granted to a Spanish captain, Juan José Bailly, as part of a land grant. However, any product that came out of the, salt, the La Sal del Rey or the salt lakes um, was taxed by the king of Spain. She explains that because of the king's taxing of the salt, all of the lake's minerals were owned by the Spanish government, adding that the minerals were government-owned until the United States Civil War. In 1866, after the Civil War was over, 
the state of Texas passed a, um, a constitutional amendment. Bacha Garza explains that the amendment took the resources from the Salt Lakes away from the Texas government, passing ownership to the private landowner. The mining of La Sal de Rey's resources continued until... Mining officially stopped at La Sal de Rey around 1930. Refuge manager for RGV's National Wildlife Refuge, Brian Winton, says because the lake is located between North and South America, people would meet near the lakes to trade resources such as salt, cotton, and weapons. Winton adds that the lake's water is 10% saltier than regular seawater. The salt mining and the value of salt as a commodity for a big area made it significant. Everybody needed to come here and get their bag of salt. He mentions that since the pandemic started, there has been more people visiting La Sal del Rey. We used to have maybe 10 visitors a day. Now we're getting, you know, hundreds. And, you know, we some days we wouldn't have any visitors. Winton reveals that because of the increase of people interested in visiting La Sal del Rey, the National Wildlife Refuge plans on adding more safety signs on the lake. Reporting for KVAQ-TV, Hector Tamis. COVID-19 is causing an uptick in the demand for counseling. That's according to a UTRGV counseling associate professor. Here's our reporter, Yaneli Hernandez, with more. COVID-19 has made its one-year mark this March. Students and others are searching for ways to cope with the sudden change in the classroom, work, and at home. Samuel CISD student Samuel Alonso mentions that quarantine has taken a toll on his mental health. It's been affected negatively, uh, I can tell you that much. There's been some pretty dark times that came from it, and I really the mental health is a, a byproduct of everything, right? So, you know, I've, I've had some deaths in the family, and that, that was in, incredibly rough, and that's something that came directly from COVID. Alonso mentions that he is now seeing counseling at San Rio High School every week to cope with this rough time. Licensed professional counselor and UTRGV lecturer Dr. Kim Nujin Finn explains why some students seek counseling, whether it's externally or within campus. People come to counselors not because they're crazy. They come to counselors because we're impartial third-party people who can sit down and help you work through whatever it is that you're going through, help you validate, you know, the feelings that you have, the feelings of loss, the feelings of trauma and anxiety and feeling sad. Dr. Nujin Finn says that if you do not decide to get counseling right away, try to speak to someone you know. UTRGV Counseling Associate Professor Clarissa Salinas mentions knowing the resources available can help people get the assistance they need. Families are extremely stressed and may not even be aware of the, the services that we offer. In particular, our counseling department, we have a community counseling center. And so our interns provide those counseling services free of charge to the community. Um, but right now, we're really limited with clients. If you or someone you know are looking for counseling services, UTRGV is providing community counseling. Appointments can be made by calling the Center for Edinburgh at 956-665-2574 or Brownsville at 956-882-3897. Reporting for KVAQ-TV, I'm Yaneli Hernandez. For the second consecutive year, UTRGV is following UT system guidelines and is canceling all foreign travel for 2021. The Office of International Programs and Partnerships aims to provide students an enriching academic and research experience abroad. Destinations in the study abroad program include Peru, Switzerland, Spain, and England. According to the Center for Systems Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University, COVID-19 cases are now surpassing the 100 million mark on the world map. As a result, all study abroad programs are forced to be canceled. 
this has just been really tough on everybody. I mean, you know, I really feel bad because, you know, the, the big part of my, the reason I do the Peru trip is to introduce our students to, you know, what, a, you know, the, the, you know, it's the number one food destination in the world. It's got, you know, pre-Columbian ruins that are fantastic. I mean, it's, you know, culturally, there's so many interesting things. Students are encouraged to follow the UTRGV international programs and partnerships on social media for any updates on the program. You may also contact the study abroad office at IPP at utrgv.edu or call 956-665-3572. Beginning today, COVID-19 vaccines will be available to all adults in Texas. The Texas Department of State Health Services recommends that all vaccine providers continue to prioritize adults 80 years and older. DSHS will host vaccine clinics for those adults who are eligible. To find upcoming vaccine clinics near you, you can enroll in the Texas Public Health Vaccine Scheduler. More information can be found at dshs.texas.gov slash COVID vaccine. In a press conference last Thursday, Governor Greg Abbott announced that Texans can also dial 211 to learn more information about getting a COVID-19 vaccine. Again, that number is 211. After two semesters of virtual graduations, UTRGV is expecting to host in-person commencement ceremonies this spring for 2021 and 2020 graduates. Students graduating spring and summer of 2021 will have their ceremonies outdoors on Friday, May 7th in the Edinburgh campus and Saturday, May 8th in the Brownsville campus. The class of 2020 will also have the opportunity to participate in commencement ceremonies during the following dates. Graduates can bring a maximum of four guests to ensure appropriate social distancing. Safety measures such as face coverings will also be set in place for these ceremonies. For more information or a list of frequently asked questions, visit utrgv.edu slash commencement. In this week's police reports, The Brownsville Fire Department's fire marshal is looking for the identity of a person of interest in an arson investigation. The suspect was last seen driving a white Hummer. The incident occurred at the 2600 block of Old Port Isabel Road in Brownsville. Anyone with whereabouts or information about the suspect or this vehicle can contact the Brownsville Fire Marshal's office at 956-548-6075. A reward of up to $500 is being offered for information leading up to the identification and arrest of the suspect. Hidalgo County Crime Stoppers is looking for a suspect with a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officials described 21-year-old Eric Ibarra as having black hair and black eyes. Officials say he is about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighs 125 pounds. He was last seen in Alamo. If you have any information, you can anonymously call the Hidalgo County Crime Stoppers hotline at 956-668-8477. Now here's this week's Noticias en Español with contributing reporter Natalie Flores. La Iglesia Border Mission sigue prestando servicio hacia la comunidad durante estos tiempos de pandemia, no solo para los residentes de la ciudad de Hidalgo, sino también para las personas del otro lado de la frontera México-Americana. Directora de Border Mission, Megan González, dijo que la iglesia fue fundada en 1956 por sus bisabuelos, Geraldo y Catherine Morgan, y desde ese momento siempre buscaron ayudar a la comunidad de diferentes maneras. Una de ellas fue las despensas que se proporcionan cada jueves a las 9 de la mañana. Pero el COVID-19 cambió por completo la forma de proceder en los servicios religiosos y en la manera de entregar dichas ayudas. Antes dábamos desayunos calientes y las personas podían venir aquí y todas las personas eran bienvenidas. Y después de terminar los servicios de la iglesia, podían regresar a casa con sus despensas. Después de la pandemia, cambiamos esto solo a autoservicio. Megan y su esposo, Rolando González, nos cuenta que las despensas son donaciones por bodegas de alimentos alrededor del Valle del Río Grande y que su misión es ayudar a toda la comunidad con este tipo de servicio. Tenemos asociaciones con bodegas locales y compañías productoras aquí en Hidalgo, en Far, Álamo y Edinburgh. También tenemos camiones que van por la mercancía como pepinos, tomate, pimiento y también compañías que donan a las afueras del valle. Sí, de esta manera es como obtenemos las donaciones. 
El cierre de puentes causó que las personas que recogían su despensa desde Reynosa ya no tuvieran acceso a estas ayudas, por lo que optaron por mandar camionetas llenas de despensa a lugares estratégicos como iglesias, iglesias a las cuales las personas pueden asistir para seguir obteniendo este servicio. Voluntario de Border Mission, Dewey Rhodes, nos cuenta que las recientes olas de inmigración acarrearon nuevas necesidades en la ciudad de Reynosa, así que ahora las despensas también se distribuyen dentro de la comunidad inmigrante del sur que espera el paso a Estados Unidos. Nosotros mandamos todo esto a Reynosa, México. Nos aseguramos de que la gente obtenga su comida. El problema en la frontera por ahora es que tenemos demasiados inmigrantes de Belice, Guatemala y Cuba. Tenemos muchas personas en Reynosa que no tienen casa, que duermen en el mero centro de Reynosa y hay como 300 de ellos. Rose concluyó que para dar servicio comunitario, cualquier persona puede asistir los miércoles y jueves a preparar las despensas. Megan y Rolando mencionan que todo es posible gracias a los voluntarios que asisten cada miércoles a preparar las despensas que administrarán al día siguiente y que por el momento seguirán ayudando al Valle de Texas y a la comunidad reinocense con esta ayuda. Reportando para aquí VAQTV, soy Natalie Flores. That's all we have for you today. For KVAQ TV, I'm Verilu Infante. Stay safe and see you next time.